Good morning. I'm getting ready to read into Ezekiel chapter 24. I am so excited. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we will see what you had to say, look at ourselves, line ourselves up with your heart, because you said you're a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your character has not changed. Your ways of reaching us are many. And thank you for Ezekiel being a man that you used at that time to do what he needed to do as, he, as you try to show us your heart that we may be like you. When we understand you are a tender-hearted God at all times. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God is not a mean God. God is not mean in the um, Old Testament and then get in the New Testament and give us his son Jesus. Mean people don't give gifts. If God was not God, he would not give us a gift. If he was not good, he would never think of us. Mean people. I've never met a mean person or anybody mean to give anything as precious as Jesus. Thought about, I got one of my sons, when he buys me something, he thinks about it. He thinks about it. He, 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 I, I don't even understand his intellect. I don't even understand how he knows. He, he Even if he, well, I remember one year he bought me a pair of socks. To this day, I still got those socks. Because when he searches, he says, I'm getting this for my mother. And when I get it, I can tell that he thought about my size, the quality, what I would wear it with. He had a purpose for it. And that's what the, our good God did when he gave us, he thought about it. He thought about, I want to give them the best. And he gave us his son. And his son came to this earth and said, all I want y'all to do in return for me, representing my father is to stop. I didn't come here to, 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 to throw a rock at anybody. Because he said, I was like the people that was gathered to throw a rock at the woman that was called a daughter. He said, I would have been throwing rocks would have beat me. The mountains would have failed and got all of y'all. He said, but I came to show you that you can stop. In fact, the father told me to go and put, a, put an end to it. Not an end to you. I, I didn't come that you may continue in sin. I came that you can have no reason to want to sin. I'm just that good. I'm just that God. But here we will find in, in uh, Ezekiel where God is saying, I am going to show you how I feel about when you hurt each other. You can't hurt me, says the Lord. But it grieves me that you hurt each other. So the rap that I'm pouring out on you, it's what you did behind them folk back and sometimes even in their face. And I saw every bit of it. I saw your motive. I saw your reasoning. And I'm going to deal with it today. So whenever we don't get at God and how he responded, what caused God to move like that? What caused God to get so angry at a nation that he would destroy it? What would cause God to move in on the United States? Is it because we are all on one accord? Do we have a kingdom mindset? Do we understand that God is king? And he's not to be voted in and out? What he says is good for all people? He's not an unrighteous king. He's God. Again in the night, this is uh, um, Ezekiel. Again in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Alright, we started out who was at uh, King Jehoiakim, and his, his um, uh, being taken over by Nebuchadnezzar was the date that um, uh, Ezekiel is saying that after nine months of being in exile, God spoke to me. Ezekiel said, God told him, son of man, write the names of the day. Write, the, write this day down. I think if, in our day, it would be January 15th. Even at this, until this same day, the king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this same day. Remember this day. In our terms, in our day, our calendar. Because the Jewish calendar, when God brought them out of Egypt, he said, we're going to start over. We're not going to have the pagans calendar. We're going to start. When did, I, when did life really start? It started September. It was behind. If we were in January, he said, we're going to start out. Because they came out of I don't want to get too deep in that, but 
But God's calendar, the Jewish calendar, is, is about, what is it, about four months behind them, let me see. October, November, December, January. About four months behind us is how the Jews count their calendar days. And he, he said, he said, write that date down. Put it on the calendar. Today's date. What's going to happen? Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this same day. He said, the day that God spoke is the day that Jeremiah wrote it down. It said, on this day, Jerusalem is getting ready to make every move that God has already spoken and it's going to happen today. And that's amazing. And utter a parable unto the rebellious house and say unto them, because the word going to get around. He said, say to that rebellious house, what is a rebellion? That means I can't get you to change. I don't care what I've done. I've sang. I wrote skits. I wrote letters. You saw people die. I gave you my word. And ultimately, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to give you myself. The God that you call mean is going to send you a gift. And you can't tell me nobody mean can send you a gift like Jesus. I thought about him. Thus says the Lord God, set on a pot. He said, this is what I want you to do. On the same day that Nebuchadnezzar is going to invade Jerusalem, I want you to set a pot. Now, Ezekiel is already in exile. And the people in exile with Ezekiel is watching Ezekiel. He says, set a pot, set it on, and, on pour, and pour water into it. Get a pot, pour some water into it, gather the pieces thereof into it, every good piece. I want the thigh and the shoulder. Fill it with the best bone. Don't get, 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 a, get, a, get, a, get a get a cow and get the best cow and cut them up and, 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 and get ready to put them in a pot with some water in it. He said, take the choice of the flock. Go, Why don't give me a weak flock? Give me one of the best. And burn also the bones under it. And make it boil well. He said, I want that pot. I want that meat in it. And I want it to boil well done. Well. And let them see. Just let it sit there and just marinate and just... Just, just get all the juices and the flavors, the bones of it therein, the bones inside of it, the meat inside of it. I can just, 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 just do what I said, Ezekiel. Why did the Lord say this? Wherefore, thus says the Lord God, woe to the bloody city. He said, because this pot is going to represent what you have done to each other. To the pot whose scum is therein, the scum of the earth. You've lied, you've killed, you fornicated, you did, you do what you do. He said, I'm going to take the pot whose scum is inside of it, scum, you know, scum is that thing you just can't hardly get out of that pot. You can't get it out. It's hard to get out. And whose scum is not gone out of it. I boiled it, I put it in there, bring it out piece by piece. Let not one, let no lot fall upon. In other words, don't look at the, the good part, get the thigh, then get the shoulder. Say, well, I'm going to pull this out. That, you know how we rank people. Don't get the king out first. Just pull them out. All, everything in that part is, is, is all the same. Don't, don't say, let me look over it. No, every piece of it. Why? For her blood is in the midst of her. She set it on the top of a rock. That's what she did. When you kill somebody, you set it on top of a rock. She poured not upon the ground to cover it with dust. Whenever something is dead, you're supposed to bury it. And blood represents something of the flesh is missing. And whenever God, whenever the children of Israel were taught by Moses to make sure that when something is killed, an animal is killed, that you cover it, the blood that you drain out of that animal and cover it with the uh, don't leave it wide open. It's dishonor God to see blood laying in the, in, on the ground and just leave it on the tent. First of all, that's filthy. And God said, cover that up. 
Don't bring me things and leave mess all over the place. But but Israel was so uh, sinful that they would kill somebody and leave the blood laying on the rock. And leave it out there. He said, if you do this, you're going to cause my fury to come upon and take vengeance. He said, I'm telling you, son, I killed but one. I was saved for one. I told Zedekiah, if you would just behave yourself, I'll save this city. He told Abraham to go over there and find some righteous people. He said, but you find it, a, a few, I'll save the city. That it might cause fear to come and take vengeance if I see blood. When I see blood and, I, and you didn't cover it, I get, I'm, 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 I have set her blood up on the top of the rock that it should not be covered. He said, I'm going to do to you what you did to those. Whatever you did, I have to show you I am a reflection or a mirror of your decisions. I'm not trying to do anything but keep my word. I brought you out of the land. I saw you laying in blood. I saw the umbilical cord still on you and your mama not even nowhere near. I pick you up. I wash you. I put you in the best schools. I gave you everything you needed. You grew up and turned your back on me. You were laying in blood when I saw you. And I and you were not so contaminated that I wouldn't touch you. Left to die. And I saw something valuable in you. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, woe to the blood, the bloody city. Are we killing in our city today? Is the ground, you know, when um, Cain killed Abel, the ground, ground started communicating with God. He says, he says, what's up? There's some blood in me. You didn't make me like this. But one man, the ground spoke. And we've been killing ever since. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, woe to the bloody city. I will even make the power for great fire great. He said, ooh, what you did, ooh. He said, you don't understand. You don't understand what I put in man. And you, and you mess with something that I created. He said, I'm going to make a fire and it's going to be great. He said, heap on wood, kindle the fire, make sure the fire is burning right. Consume the flesh and spice it with it. Put that meat in there and just, put this, just let it do that. Put it in there. And let the bones be burned. Get it all the way down into the, let that water to get to the pot until the bones are burned. Then after everything in it is consumed, the meat, the bones, take the pot itself. Then set it empty on the coal. Take the pot and set it on the coal. Put it on the fire that the brass of it may be hot and may burn. And that the filthiness in of it may be molten. And it, that the scum of it may be consumed. He said, I want everything about anything unrighteous in that pot. And once it boils itself all the way down to the bone, and that pot was burning, that thing had to be hot to burn the bone. He said, then set the pot on fire. I don't even want to contain it. What is God saying? How could I compare myself to that? When I don't represent God, he has, he, don't want a, he don't even want to follow me. Not even the thing I was in. Destroy it all. When those different cities came against the children of Israel, when God fought for them, he would say, destroy everything. Don't say nothing. And there would be times he would say, okay, go to that city, pick that, you know, redeem, get, 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 the, get the stuff that was of value out of there. But then there was some that he said, I don't want one, don't, he said, don't you, don't even put on the earring of those folks. Destroy everything from don't don't leave a remembrance of that person ever being in earth. Get them out, move it out of the way. And now he's talking to his people. He said, "I brought you out, picked you up, cleaned you out, educated you, gave you the business, you turn your back on me, and then you start killing people like it wasn't anything, and thinking that you glorified me, killing for becoming to churches and worshiping me." He said. It, She has wearied herself with lies. This is what the church had done. And when I say church, we are 
I'm talking about Judah, the Jews that were represented as God's chosen. She has wearied herself with lies. Jews ain't supposed to be lying. If you're a Jew, you ain't got no, if you're a Jewish nation, you're not supposed to be lying. That's uncommon. Jew, you steal the light. You, even if you if you say you're a Jew, people back off and give you some respect, but you're just having that name. And even, that's the name that we ought to be as believers. That we, if you say you're a believer, you ain't got no need to lie. It's just uncommon. That don't even make sense. You say Jesus and lie at the same time. What's up with that? She has wearied herself with lies and have great scum went not forth out of her. That's scum. Every time you do anything that will line up with God's word, it's scum. Her scum shall be in the fire. And the filthiness of lewdness, sex, cruel sex, all kind of sex, any kind of way you want it, any way you want it, under the green tree, under the dry tree, in the courthouse, in the white house, in the black house, in the jail house, in the in the hospital, in the schoolhouse, everywhere, in the filthiness of lewdness, because I have purged you, and you were not purged. I pulled you out of that. I personally put my hand on you and brought you out of that, cleaned you up, set you up, and here you are. He represented like that, and I'm the one that cleaned, cleaned you. How you get yourself back in this position like that? Thou shalt not be purged from your filthiness now. Ain't no need of crying out to me now anymore till I have caused my fear to rest upon you. I got to get you back for all the things that you thought of and did. God hates sin. And so people say, oh, God is so, he is, uh-uh, it's us. Do you leave things unclean around your house? When you go to the bathroom and your body releases what is not wanted, do you keep it? Anytime we are not productive, do you have a company and you know your company's worth and you just keep people around just to say, I don't want to file them. I don't want to do the thing to them. Do you stay in your marriage when it, when your husband is cheating and beating you and you stay there? And then you want God not to have emotions about it or uh, consequences for what his company is supposed to be represent, representing and it's not. It's how the Lord has spoken it, and it shall come to pass, and I will do it. I will not go back. I'm not going to change my mind when I start. You don't want me like that. If I can produce a gift like Jesus, you don't want to see me mad. Neither will I spare. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to look at you and say, oh, no, that, she ain't but six, seven. She 92. I'm not doing that. Neither will I spare. Neither will I repent. I'm not going to change my mind according to your ways. And according to your doings, shall you be judged, says the Lord God. We cannot continue to sin and think that God is going to overlook it. And the good thing about it, you could be walking in God's word. And if you mess up, he said, you see, you race to start over to do it again. Like he told us, start out like that with Cain. Cain, Cain accept it like that. Go back and do it over. Cain did like us today. Ain't done it over. Also, the word of the Lord came unto me. So, Ezekiel said, I got some else to tell y'all. The pot is on, the pot, what was in it is burned, and the pot itself. God said, I don't want nothing left. And he's talking about the evil of his people that's supposed to be representing his company. Also, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away you the desire of your eyes with a stroke. Yet neither shall you mourn nor weep, neither shall your tears run down. For bear to cry. Don't even think about crying. Put it off. Make no mourning for the dead. Behind, bind them tired. In other words, keep your outfit on, your head, and put your shoes on your feet and cover not, and cover not lips. If I didn't look at it like that, I know different commentators try to figure out what he said. If I so, if I cover my lip, that means it's, it's just, it's just, he said, cover not lips and eat not the bread of men. 
don't whatever you do during the time of a funeral, he said, don't respond like that. And he's talking about his wife. He said, today your wife gonna die. And then he said today, but he just said your wife gonna die. Let's see what happened. So I spoke in, unto the people in the morning. I told these folks what God spoke to me about. And that evening my wife died. I told them what God told me and they saw it happen that same day as I was commanded. So I spoke unto the people in the morning and that evening my wife died and I did in the morning as I was commanded. God told me, now whether that morning he spoke, that evening she died, and the next morning he said, I did what God said. You never saw my face change because God said not to respond. Because I already knew that he was going to do it and he did it. And it's just like him. If he can say it and do it, then I know that what he said he meant for me to carry out that way. God spoke it. He did it. So what was my assignment after he did it? Don't treat it like, don't cry. That's hard. But you're talking to Ezekiel. God said, you, he said, you're dealing with a rebellious uh, group of people and I'm on. And them, I'm going to make your head harder than nails. They're hard here, but yours going to be harder. You're going to be an unusual um, human being. And the people said unto me, Will you tell us what all this stuff, what's going on that you're doing? What's, I mean, you see, we, we, we know you are theatrical. But your wife just died. What's up with that? Then I answered them, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, he said, I only say what the word says. And I make sure I don't pull it out of context. You can fight with this word. But just read it like it said and, and let God speak. He said, speak unto the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will profane my sanctuary. My wife was my, as my sanctuary, somebody I loved. The excellency of your strength. He said, you love to go to church. He said, but I'm going to profane it. In other words, it's not going to be a good place to go. The desire of your eyes and that which you, your soul pity it. And your sons and your daughters whom you have left shall fall by the sword. He said, the sanctuary, the place that you built in my name, that I told Solomon that I'll be there always. He said, I'm getting ready to destroy that place. I'm getting ready to allow it to happen. And you shall do as I have done. He said, in that day, just like you didn't see me cry over my wife and the dearest thing that we've got who my wife was and what she meant to me. Jerusalem means a lot to you. He said, but you, you, you would do as I have done. You're not going to cry. You should not cover lips, nor eat bread of men, no, no repast, and your tires, your attire shall be upon your heads. In other words, don't, don't pull off nothing showing that you're sad. And your shoes upon your feet, you shall not mourn nor weep. You're not going to cry over that. You're not going to cry over Jerusalem. Why? But you shall pine away. You don't get so weak and just just be disappearing, just just dissolving for your iniquities. You're gonna see the room, but you're gonna be so hurt until you it you don't even have time to cry over that and mourn one toward another. You're gonna be looking at each other and you 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 gonna have your own problems intensified. So the things that you love are not going to even matter. Thus he ziggler is unto you a sign. God said, I'm giving you, uh, uh, I'm letting you know, this is like a, Ezekiel is like a sign, like a cloud. It's warning you the things that is about to come down out of the sky. is near. Thus he ziggler is unto you a sign. According to all that he does, has done, shall you do. He said, everything that Ezekiel ever told you about me, that's what you're going to do. Every word ever spoken. You gonna burn because you wouldn't stop. He both would ask me, Ezekiel, what, what, what's up with all of this? When they said, oh, you should have been crying out to God, said, Lord, now they can do that. What you, what you doing all that for? You should know that I am the Lord, the God. You should know that I am the Lord God. 
Also, thou son of man, shall it not be in the day when I take from them their strength? I'm going to take the man away, the joy of their glory. I'm going to take the women away. I'm going to take everything that, that you like, the desire of the eyes, the things that you like, and then whereupon they set their minds, their sons, and their daughters. I'm going to take away families, the thing that makes life make sense. That he that escapes in that day shall come unto you. He said, some of you folks are going to escape and they're going to make it back over here where you are. You are already over here under Nebuchadnezzar. Some of them folks coming in there. That he that escapes that death that is going to be happening in Jerusalem. They don't get into that. But he said, if they come to you, he said that they that escape in that day should come unto you, come unto you, to cause you to hear within your ears and tell you, and to cause it within thine ears. I'm going to read that again. I'm sorry, because that, that's a question mark. That he that escapes in the day shall come unto you to cause to hear it with thine ears. Let me read that. That's verse 26. And I want to see exactly what it's saying, because we don't leave out here just saying something. And that's Ezekiel 24, and I'm going to verse 26, what they have they said here. On that day, one who escapes will come to you to let you hear it with your ears. It, okay, King James has a question mark, and I didn't see that question mark earlier. He said, he's going to take away your sons and daughters and everything that's in Jerusalem. I'm going to take away that he that escapes in the day shall come unto you to cause you to hear it sure with thine ear. It's to, with thine ears. And that day shall your mouth be open to him which is escaped by the time they come in. Right now, all that stuff going through, you may not be, you may be very silent while it's happening, but they're going to make it out of it. And you shall speak in the word of God, but it's going to continue to come through you. Be no more dumb, and you shall be a sign unto them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Those that escape and get a chance to live after that desire, or disaster, I mean, when it was a desire of, of the wicked, because, well, if you didn't desire, that's what you're going to get. Well, I meant to say disaster. He said, when they come and escape, all of those people are going to walk up and they're going to come to you. I'm going to speak again. It's not over. So what God is saying according to um, Ezekiel chapter 24 is that it's that day. It's that judgment day. He said everything that I spoke and it's going to be hard but people nose is going to be cut off, ears are going to be cut off killed blood in the streets, sons and daughters taken. It's going to be the only experience that I've seen since I've been alive and saw with my eyes and I did see that on TV is when 911 was hit. And you would think who would have a mind like that? I never could never. A person that don't care nothing about life, about certain people's lives. And God allowed it to be so because they would listen. This is the only house God has. And he said, I will set an example to let the whole world know, you can't do this in my house. You got to be all right. Stay in the word.